Delta G again. Today we're going to be talking about the actual procedure for making one of these smoke bombs. Basically it's a mixture of 60% potassium nitrate to 40% sugar, but it's just a little more complicated than mixing them together. We'll talk about the procedure later. First, let's go over how to get the ingredients you need. The first ingredient you're going to need to get is potassium nitrate. This is a very common chemical in pyrotechnic formulas, although it's a little hard to get. Fortunately, you can purchase it at Tree Stump Remover, at Ace, Lowe's, Home Depot, Garden Stores, and many others. It's only 90% concentration, but it'll work. The ingredient potassium nitrate we're going to use for this formula is from the internet. If you have the means, I'd highly recommend buying it off a site like Skylighter.com or perhaps even eBay, because the stuff you're going to get from the internet is usually 99% concentration. Sugar isn't hard to get at all. If you don't have sugar in your house, it'd go out and steal some. I really don't care. Matches are an optional ingredient. We're going to be using those to set off the smoke bomb, because I'm considering that you may not have a fuse. You'll also need a stirring rod to mix the mixture in the pan. As for the pan itself, you're going to want it to be as thick as possible with a handle. The heat source can be virtually anything from this heating coil to an open flame to an alcohol burner. You're also going to need a casing to put the mixture in. PVC pipe will work just as well. The scale you're going to want to use can be a kitchen scale for this, although I would recommend investing in a more accurate digital scale, as this will make uh, the accuracy of the formula a little better and give you a better smoke bomb. Before you use these ingredients, be sure to grind them up. The finer the powder, the quicker the reaction will be. If you don't have a mortar and pedestal, just mash it with a rock. For our smoke bomb, we're going to keep it simple and just use 60 grams of potassium nitrate and 40 grams of sugar. This may not seem like very much, but take it, it will make a very, very large cloud of smoke. So with that, you have all your ingredients ready, and we can do the procedure. Now I want to recommend that you do this outside. In fact, I implore you to do it outside. Okay, so now that you have all the ingredients ready, it's time to go on to the procedure itself. The procedure is rather dangerous. It basically consists of taking this potassium nitrate and sugar mixture, putting it over the lowest heat possible from your heat source, and allowing the sugar to melt around the potassium nitrate to form an almost perfectly homogenized mixture that will act as a smoke bomb. But this procedure is extremely dangerous. Most people regard it as being rather easy to do, but there are a few major safety precautions that you have to follow with this, and it's almost as dangerous as making flash powder, in my opinion. Always, always, always wear your safety goggles. I mean, that's just kind of a given rule with chemistry. You're going to have to wear those things, no matter how stupid you look in them. Secondly, always be stirring the mixture while you're heating it. If any one part of it in the pan gets too hot while you're mixing it, that little part will go off and make a chain reaction that will completely explode the mixture. And thirdly, you're going to want to use small amounts and do it slow. If you think the thing is taking too long, you're probably doing it the right way. And with that, let's show the procedure. So, all the ingredients in the pan, and begin slowly stirring it over the heat. Keep it on low. For this procedure, we're going to speed things up, because it usually takes about, I would say, a half an hour to maybe even 45 minutes to get these mixtures melted. First, it'll look like this. That means you're doing something right. Continue stirring it. The next phase will be like this, starting to get clumpier and uh, a brownish color from the sugar melting. It's very similar to making molasses, actually. Give it some more time and it'll start to clump up a lot around the spoon. Turn the heat down and just keep going. Once it looks like this, you can kill the heat and just continue mixturing it. It's basically going to look like peanut butter now. You know it's ready when you have this sticky goop in the pan. It's hard to imagine that'll become a smoke bomb, but we can go ahead with it. Take that mixture and pack it into the container you want. It doesn't have to be great, just make sure that you get all the sticky material in the pan into your container. It's not very difficult. I just used a spoon and my gloves and hammered it into the can and that was about the end of it. So uh, with that, we're going to push it down, 
get some scissors and cut off the excess around it just so it looks nice and you're going to want to take those matches cut the heads off and press each match head into the top of the mixture you're going to want to do all of these steps very quick because it's going to start drying fast and once it dries it's as hard as a rock once all your matches are pressed in the smoke bomb is ready to go place it on the ground light the matches and have fun with the thing what's up guys it's Delta G here comes our uh, test run of the smoke bomb it's a little different container shown in the video same material though just packed into a PVC pipe tube and to ignite it we have about 20 or so match heads just taped to that upper surface. Let's go do it. Here is all the remains burnt out on both sides. By the way, as an extra added little note, as you may have noticed, that would make a uh, pretty good rocket engine. If you have a rocket nozzle mix and you want to put a nozzle on something like that, you can have a pretty effective engine. Just wanted to make that note. Let's get out of here. Alright, so that just about concludes our segment on smoke bombs. I hope you had a good time with those. I invite you to explore further into the formulas, try using different proportions of oxidizer and fuel, try using brown sugar or perhaps even powdered sugar. Yeah, all kinds of things like that. Just toy around with it. Uh, even try other oxidizers, maybe like ammonium nitrate, probably won't work as well, but it's worth a shot. Um, anyhow, so I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. We'll be making another segment soon on how to make a uh, thermite device, which will cut through steel. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'll see you then. Maybe. I don't even know you people. I don't know if you're even going to watch this. Yeah.